Hey everyone, Georgie here with Ukraine Matters. I'm traveling, so the setup is a little bit wild. That's why it's taking me a little bit to <laughs> too much to release video. But this has been a very, very busy couple of days, both for myself, where I attended the military expo from the US Army 2023, and a video of that is coming quite soon but also for Ukraine, because what happened is, what we discussed in the last video, I really recommend you watch it, but we were talking about the fact that Russia can attack, but it's gonna be a dumb attack, because while Russia might technically have resource to attack or execute any kind of activity, it's a stupid idea. But uh, we know for sure that stupid ideas never stopped Russia, so what happened is that Russia decided to attack Avdiivka again. But now, not only with uh, just uh, regular forces that was in the area, but they really, really put a lot of effort into this. Something for, for you to know about Avdiivka. Avdiivka has been there from the start of the war. It's a huge fortification for Ukraine. Russia has tried to breach through that fortification for, as I said, more than a year now. They were not able to penetrate the main defense platform, the city of Avdiivka, but they were able to slowly, but uh, kind of like, I wouldn't say very surely, but at least definitely slowly, to edge their ways around this, to get all the way to Krasnohorivka in the north and take Vodene and Opetne in the south. Russians were really hoping now that they would be able to then attack from the, uh, these two directions and execute a pincer movement, trapping Avdiivka, ha ha ha, glorious Russia. Uh, that is probably the most obvious plan in, in history, because anyone that sees this map without the arrows and says, hey, Russia is going to attack, what do you think they will do? Literally everyone can tell you without any military expertise whatsoever. Uh, well, we were expecting attack in the north, which did indeed take place, but majority of effort came actually for Avdiivka. And here the attack was uh, attack, the attack was on four major directions, which is around Krasnohorivka, which is like south around Vesele over here. Then it was from Vodene going up and actually like more towards Severne and then also from Opetne. This did not pan well for Russia. Russia has put a lot of effort in. When I say a lot of effort, I'm not talking about the effort that Ukraine has put at the start of Ukrainian offensive. When, remember, there was a little bit of columns engaged, like a couple of tanks, Bradleys. No, it was tens of tanks. It was literally many, many tens of uh, infantry fighting vehicles. And it all blew up. It all blew up in Russian face. Ukrainians were able to meet this head on. Ukrainians were able to target everything that came to them and they were able to defeat it. Certain forward-facing positions of Ukrainians were lost. We need to recognize this. But those positions are basically gray zone-ish, if you know what I mean. It's like if the first forward position is lost after you also burn like over, as Ukrainian side is reporting, over 90 infantry fighting vehicles in a day. 90! That is, it's just beyond me. Like, 90, over 30 tanks, over 90 infantry fighting vehicles. It's ludicrous amounts, ludicrous amounts of, of uh, armor that uh, Ukraine has uh, destroyed. But the, what I'm saying is, is that Ukraine was able to hold the initial push of Russians, their surprise attack. And this is the most important, because what Russia has been doing here right now is something that is called like a big land manure. Uh, sorry, people say that I say manure, but it's because it's very nice to, yeah. I obviously mean manure. So Russia tried to execute big land manure uh, with regards to attacking Ukraine. And Ukraine might not have been fully sure where exactly the troops that Russia was uh, gathering would attack. We now know where they did attack, 
but there might have been some certain misknowledgement about that. Ukrainians, on the other hand, have held the first wave. They're not completely out of the woods. Russians still have some forces. It's stupid to throw them now, like to, to, to throw good resources after bad resources, but that's what Russians like to do. So we can expect that they will try to push more. But the most important thing that Russians lost already is the surprise factor. The factor that they are going to put significant effort on a specific direction has been now revealed. Ukrainians are now reacting. Additional reinforcements are coming into the area. Ukrainians will put additional effort to hold this area. So everything after this first day, the fact that Ukraine didn't collapse here is now good news. After this, it's going to be still a lot of heavy fighting. I don't say completely that Russia cannot push Ukrainians out here, but in my perspective, from what I have seen and what I am seeing, it is very unlikely. But as I said in previous video, we should be very much aware that certain, uh, certain level of uh, ground lost is completely possible. And we should be aware of it. Beyond the Avdiivka direction, Russians are also attacking in the north. Russians are trying to attack towards the Kupiansk direction. Uh, Russians are trying to attack towards the uh, Liman direction. And Russians trying to attack here uh, in the middle as well. Here, uh, some reports of a marginal Russian gains, but more and more reports are that Russians are just getting like slapped in the face pretty much uh, across the northern uh, northern part they are decided to just throw all of the fresh resources that just arrived to the front line they are attacking with forces that had no combat experience prior it's it's not a very good idea it's not a very good idea every single analyst that i'm listening to every single one of them is saying why you, you already are stretching yourself thin with resources. You already engaged major resources in different directions. And now you're not just engaging your resources. Now you are also like putting them on the chopping block. Why? But uh, obviously the command of Russians thinks that Ukraine uh, has exhausted itself and they cannot attack. So... Remember when I talked about uh, how the uh, phases of war act when one side stops attacking, then the second side kind of counterattacks. I believe Russia thinks that Ukraine has exhausted itself in, and then they uh, decide to counterattack. I'm not completely sure about this. Potentially, Ukraine knew that Russia wants to do this counterattack. So potentially, Ukraine wants to have some resources still saved up or they're waiting until new capabilities such as F-16 arrive, but we're going to see about that. On Ukrainian side, not a major, uh, no major advances uh, around the Rikiv direction. There are certain tactical gains around the area, but again, in my perspective right now, I don't see Ukraine advancing far enough. I'm not completely sure that there are still resources for Ukraine. I think right now Ukraine is going to be preoccupied with defending against Russians and uh, basically we'll see what's going to happen when Russians are finally going to run out. In any case, I will keep you updated as much as possible. Russians are having a bad time, which is good news always to hear. And thank you so much for watching. Slava Ukraini guys, and I'll see you next time. Stay tuned for all of the videos from my trip.